everybody, it's Simon Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I'm going to be showing you how to make this really cute uh, kind of double frame birthday card or just card, it depending on what you know um, occasion you're going to be using it for. So basically, this is how it looks. So I've decorated this. We're using the Mary, no, yeah, Mary Poser papers from First Edition, and then on the back here, you've got room to write your message. Just got this nice piece of organza ribbon to tie it together and then when you open it up inside and I've popped this photo of me and my nan and then this lovely sentiment which I used when I made the card for Mother's Day and a few people have asked and this is by Indigo Blue and I will share the links to the stamp that I've got for that one but how lovely is this you've got this hinge on the back here and then that stands up and that can be displayed you've got this pretty ribbon there as well but I love it, I just think it's come together really well and because it's a square this is so easy to make any size you want so you could make it as large as the shadow box card that I made a few weeks ago and you could have two of them side by side. Once you see how it's done it's so easy, so easy to adapt like I said any size you want. You don't have to add the ribbon either so if you just want to you know have it closed like so then that's fine but I just thought the ribbon was just a nice little touch and um, yeah absolutely love how this has come together, it's really pretty and um, I'm sure my nan is going to love this. This is for her birthday. So you could, if you want, have you know the inside where you write your message, but I thought if she's gonna keep this open and displayed, I'd rather keep my message kind of at the back, because it's a little bit more personal, I guess, in terms of what you may pop on there, but that will be obviously facing away and what she will see is just that really nice message and the photo of the two of us. So yeah, just give you a close up here, I've used, this was just a daisy die, and this one here, these are just, I kind of always go to this leaf die. It works for everything. These are fussy cut from the same collection, the butterflies, and then I've used three little, you know, um, flat back kind of pearls there as well. Really, really easy to make, so let's crack on. Okay, so for this one I'm using the first edition Gardenia papers. I will show you both paper packs. Okay, so that's the Gardenia one there you would have seen this used lots and lots and also there's the Mariposa these are both the 12 by 12s which I've used for this one but once you see how I do it you can use 8 by 8 6 by 6 uh, and obviously more sizes in between that as well but I use these a lot and I just had a lot of the 12 by 12 I've used lots of the 8 by 8 so I thought I'm going to start using some of the 12 by 12 size okay so I've already done one because you need two identical ones so I've done that one off camera so this is a piece of eight and a half by eight and a half, but if you want to use eight by eight, because you don't have 12 by 12 um, papers, that's fine. You are going to score the same, and this will be the same score lines that you would score on any size you have. Because we're working on a square, it will be the same. It's very easy to adapt. So if you've got a pattern, you want something that, if it is directional, this is directional, because it should be that way up. There we go, that's the correct way up. But because it's so busy, and it's flowers, you can get away with it any way you want, which is why I've used it. Because if you see here, like that's now upside down, but it still works. They're now on their side, but it still kind of works. So really you want a non-directional pattern, but if you do have a directional pattern, then try and have something that's quite busy like this one here. Okay, so along the eight and a half inch side, you want to score, let me get mine, there we go. So you're gonna score at half an inch, one inch, one and a half, and two, and you do that on all four sides, okay? So don't matter what size you've got, if you've got a piece of 12 by 12 paper now, do those same score lines, you'll just have a bigger center. If you revert to the one that I done the other size, which ended up being six by six, again, I'll link that up here, then again, just do the same scoring. If you've even got something that maybe you're using A4, so you've got eight by 11 and whatever it is, three quarters, or even eight and a half by 11, Still do the half and half, you'll just have a different size in the middle, you'll have more of a rectangle, because I did, I was playing around with this one, which I'm probably going to do another project with. Now this, I can't remember what the original cut size was, let me just double check, in case some of you like this taller version. So this is a piece of 8 by 12 and you'll get that shape by scoring at half an inch on all four sides. So again, watch this tutorial and it's very, very easy to adapt. Now what you will need to do, is on any of the two sides, two opposite sides. You then also need to score at two and a half down to the second score line. So I'm going past the first, down to the second, and then also at six inches, past the first and down to the second. Then rotate the whole piece and do the same. So two and a half down to the second score line and six down to the second score line. You'll see that better when we cut it all out. 
but that will work the same as well. It doesn't matter whether you do it if you've got more of a rectangle shape, if you're using, like I said, eight and a half by 11 or A4, it doesn't matter if you do that on the shorter side or the longer side, it makes no difference, okay? So that's what you wanna do, and you wanna do that twice on two identical sizes. Now also, you may wanna do more pieces. So you can have this as like a concertina kind of picture frame. So again, once you see what I do, it's very easy to adapt. So now we're gonna go and fold and burnish all of these score lines. Now, where you've done those extra score lines, so the two and six score lines, there, that's the side you want to start on. And what you're going to do is you're going to cut down those short score lines, so where you just scored, so say this is the one that I scored at two and a half, just down to that second score line. So you can see I've gone past the first one and just gone down to this second score line here. You're then going to cut across that piece and then down this is how you make any shadow box, it's the same process with all of them, like so. And then again on the other side, you're just going to cut down to the second score line, cross that whole kind of third section to join down to the corner of this largest piece here, so that it will join here, this will be the top. And again, when I remove that, you can see what we've done. Okay, so that's the pieces. You can see how I've cut that away. So you're, you're cutting across. There's all these squares in all of this piece here. So you're cutting down two squares. It might be better if I turn it over, actually. Yeah, there we go. So you can see what you're doing. You're cutting down two squares, cutting right across from one corner to another of the third square to then join the bottom of the fourth. Okay, so you can just see all those squares, how it's all made up. Then rotate it, because obviously that's now where you've done those other score lines that we did. And again, just cut down, cut across, and cut down. The more and more you do this, the more easier it will become. Um, and it's one of those things, I've done so many now, I can kind of do them with my eyes closed. And um, they're easy, like I said, to adapt to any size you want. So let's remove that piece and there we have it so that is the shape that you want I think I've got a template from another one if not I'll draw up a template for this and I'll pop that on my blog as well just so you can kind of see um, it better so you want to do that twice so you've got two of those and then we're going to go and stick it all down so I'm going to use my wet glue and first of all I'm going to stick the two straight sides so the last flip it over okay so we're now working on the inside the last one here, I'm going to pop some glue on. If you've never made one before, wet glue is probably best because you've got a little bit of wiggle room so you can afford to kind of lift it up if you stick it down wrong. Then you want to fold it in half. So you've got two on this side and two on this side and then fold that whole piece in. And fold it right over, use your bone folder. Make sure that's all nicely spread out and all nice and flat. And then when you pull it back up again, the piece with the glue is now stuck inside and it gives you that perfect tube. And it's the easiest way to get these perfectly straight because I've had many people before, even before I've done tutorials for shadow boxes saying, you know, please do a tutorial on a shadow box. I always get them crooked or my never line up. This is the way I've always done mine and it's never failed. So again, fold it in half like so and then fold the whole piece over. Again, spread that all out. You don't need a lot of glue, because obviously what you don't want happening at this point is too much glue on that one half so that is actually you know, oozing out onto the other half and then you can't lift this piece up. So don't go crazy with the glue. And if you're just using double-sided tape, then you just want to stick it along that side and that's it. Then you're going to do exactly the same with these pieces. But what I would say first of all is lie it inside like so. And if it's catching at all, on these pieces then just trim it. Now mine there isn't, it's falling in nicely. Again this one here, see this is, this is catching ever so slightly on this side here. So I'm just going to go in and just trim a little bit off. And because it is such a busy print, um, you know, you can get away with a lot with this. And I also say as well, they're easy to decorate and kind of hide any, again, little maybe I don't know, you know, I wouldn't say it's a mistake because, you know, it's handmade and 
but sometimes you might have maybe cut a little bit crooked or something, you can easily cover these up, they're great for that. So now they both sit in there without catching. And you're going to do exactly the same again. So I'm going to run some glue along this one. Again, not too much. It's only paper, we need to tack it in place. And then with this one, what you want to do is fold it in so it lines up with the last score line. This one that lines up with these pieces here, there's a score line. Line it up with that. At the same time, fold the whole thing over and you just want to kind of push it against it. So you're just going to fold it in half like so. And again, just spread that out like so. Okay. And then you can fold these out and everything will all come up together eventually when we go to add some more glue in a minute. But you can see there what's happening. And then with this one here, so again, pop some glue and fold that one right over and then fold in half. So you're just folding one over this time. Again, make sure that all sticks down. Like so. So now you should have all these kind of flat, like sticking out like that. Next, we want to add a little bit of glue onto the corners of the flat sides. Okay, so not the pieces where we've cut away, but just a little kind of piece in a triangle shape, kind of like on those ones there. And then you can do this all at the same time. It's, I guess, a little bit fiddly, but it's not hard to do. You're just going to bring them up kind of all at the same time. So I've done one and then I bring up this side. There we go. And again, this glue dries nice and clear. So let it kind of ooze out a little bit and then just wipe it away with your finger. But if you now hold the two sides where we've cut away, it will keep everything together and you can, you know, kind of move it around a little bit, making sure it's all nicely lined up and then just wipe away any glue. Like so. Just hold that in place for a second while it all sets. Okay, so now there is that one. So you should have two, okay? Next we can just cut some mats and layers. Now I'm not gonna decorate this because I don't know whether I want this to be, it might become a get well soon card. It might be, I don't I don't know, happy birthday, you know, things like that, but I, I just don't know. So I'm just gonna keep this one blank, but I'm gonna do all the, as far as I can go really before I decorate. So the piece that I've got inside here, which is just a little mat really, just to frame your picture or your sentiment. And this is three and a quarter by three and a quarter. Now you might find it easier to stick that down first before you fold in all of your sides. So again, that's something to maybe bear in mind. You might find this next bit a little bit harder to line up. Um, but it's easy to do obviously before we fold in those sides so I'm just going to bring this one in and because it's plain it doesn't matter which way but I just want to make sure I get an even white border there and I've popped that one in quite easily but some of you you know might struggle a little bit with that so do that beforehand might be best then we've got our hinge so this piece here is a piece of one by four and a half I believe yep so along the one inch side, you just want to score it half an inch all the way down and just fold that in half. Okay, so I'm just going to make sure it's all nicely burnished. Now, I find it easiest to do one piece at a time. What you don't want to do is fold these up together like so. And this is the other test now. They should line up perfectly, okay, which mine do. You don't just want to stick that right down flat because when you go to open it, it's going to put strain on the hinge and it'll probably end up ripping away or showing off glue and stuff. It's actually better to fold it in half and stick each one on whilst it's folded because that way, when we go to open it, you get a much nicer movement with your hinge and there's no glue or anything kind of oozing out because we've stuck it down separately rather than right over the top. So I'll leave that one there actually just so you can... Again, get inspiration with the way I've decorated it. So I'm gonna just use some of my red tape here. So flip it over and I'm just gonna pop some, kind of focusing on more of the outer size, outer side of the, of the um, cardstock rather than the score line. Okay, so just trim off that. And again, pop another piece on that side. So, and then with all of the tape, make sure you get all your air bubbles out. So now I'm just going to look at which way I might have a pattern 
but I prefer more so. And I've got the grain of that green as well. So I think I'm going to do, I think I'm going to do that way. Okay, so this is going to be the back. This is my hinge. So I'll just hold them up there. So take the backing off of both, but I'm only going to stick one down at a time. So I'll just leave that one there for a moment. So this one here, you're going to stick it down. It should perfectly, because it's the same height. Like so if you're using wet glue, then obviously it might be a bit easier because you'll be able to move it around a bit. Like so. And then fold that one over. And don't don't go and stick it over like that. You want to stick it when it's actually open. So fold this piece now back and then stick this down. And because I didn't put the tape closest to the folded side, I haven't got any glue or anything oozing out. And now I can just go in the back there. I've got a much nicer hinge inside there. Can you see that really neat finish? You wouldn't have got that if you'd stuck it down like so and used wet glue or whatever and make sure you keep your sticky tape away from that folded side. But you get a much nicer finish there and I think that looks, it looks very professional. So there is that piece. Now we just need to finish with the front and the back. So I've got these two pieces here. So this one is going to go on the front because I'm then going to do another decorative layer or something like this where I've got plain white and then I've stamped my message so you can see the purple piece there that's this green piece here so I know we're covering a lot of the pattern but you know it's more about the inside so this is four and a quarter by four and a quarter you want two pieces one to go on the front and one to go on the back I just looking I think I went a bit smaller there I think that was actually four by four so it's up to you four and a quarter by four and a quarter or four by four because you can see a little bit more of the pattern there. But again, I'm going to be decorating this with lots more, so it doesn't really matter. Again, I want to make sure I've got my grain of this cardstock going the right way. Okay, like so. And then you would put another layer on top of this, which will either be um, four by four, or three and three quarters by three and three quarters, depending on what you've first done this piece as. Okay, so it's entirely up to you. But now I'm kind of done, really. You can see now it's, it is finished. You may not choose to put the ribbon on it. If you do want to add the ribbon, then you want to stick the ribbon down now with some, um, I would use a wet glue or I'd use a strong red tape. And then you will put your other mat or layer over the top of that. And like I said, this piece here is three and a half by three and a half so stamp whatever it is you want and also stick it down with foam adhesive if you see underneath here it's actually raised because I've got foam because you are using ribbon I think if you just stick it right on top you'll probably see it kind of where it's sat over the top whereas if you put it on foam it's already raised and you just get a nicer finish but you want to stick that there and you want to stick the same on the back and then you will stick your same size white piece or whatever as you're doing on the front onto the back and you'll be able to write your message and then that's all ready to decorate. But I'm going to leave it there. I think that is the main part that you need to know to make this. That is ready, you know, to be decorated now. You can keep it. It's just nice as a frame. I think I might keep this for myself and maybe put a couple of photos of friends. So I might not even add the ribbon myself. And um, in that case, I don't even need to really decorate here because I would never see it. So we'll see. It's one of those things that are there if I do, but this one is going to um, its new home with my Nan. And I know she's absolutely going to adore this one and I love it. And the nice thing is as well, is you can add lots of dimension inside here because you've got that half inch um, area to fill so you might want to turn that into a shaker you can pop a piece of acetate over the top here and then just cut a frame and stick over the top fill that with all kinds of things and you've got a lovely shaker element as well so lots and lots of scope for it like I said it's so easy to make in any size that you would like um, you can make an even smaller one so it's nice and dinky but um, I love them. I love making shadow boxes. I've got a whole playlist of shadow boxes, so I will share that as well. And you'll see that at the end of the video and it will all be shared over on my blog as well. So there you have it, guys. That's my double photo frame card or shadow box 
frame card, I don't know, you'll see what I end up calling it, but I really like it, I think it makes a lovely gift. You don't need to worry about an envelope because it's all kind of, that is it, it's all there presented together. So yeah, as always, if you've enjoyed it, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel so you get to see more. Thanks for watching, bye.